Hi, I'm Borkon. Glad to have you here. Welcome back. And today we are going to be making trenches. Well, this trench is already made. Uh, like I said in the previous episode, we had a live stream just after that episode came out. And uh, well, we blew up this. So if you've been following the perimeter challenge that I did, uh, I was very, very obsessed back then to have a super flat floor. So it might be surprising that the floor here is completely blown up. In between the bedrocks, there are some blocks left, but most of them are gone. There is a good reason for this. Uh, the reason is that we will be removing the bedrock, right? Uh, I have already mentioned this many, 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 many times. And if we go here, we have the collection of pistons. It's not enough to clear all of the bedrock, but uh, I think we should be able to do three or four layers, right? Just pistons, pistons, uh, no pistons, but almost uh, four... Uh, double chests of shulk boxes of pistons and i think we need five uh, i actually i have mentioned different numbers uh, multiple times because i keep calculating this wrong i think it's five five and a half chests oh and by the way if you're hearing weird noises that's the next thing i need to talk about because uh, I, I i i think i started the cult or or maybe i don't know maybe this is how cults start during the stream, when uh, I was blowing this up, I kept complaining about bats, but I hate bats because bats, uh, mostly because of the noise, uh, they have some other problems. And uh, Space Eagle made a resource pack with bats. He changed their sounds and their face. Hello. Hello. Bye. Yeah, uh, that 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 happened. Uh, I'm gonna be running with that resource pack, so if if you be hearing uh, weird noises <laughs> during the episode today, it's because of that. They are actually driving me less crazy when they're having my voice, even though it's very very uncanny. Um, anyway, uh, that's enough about bats. What we're gonna be starting with today, and uh, maybe that's gonna be all of the episode. I am actually not sure how much time we have for doing everything uh, that needs to be done here today. Uh, but we're gonna be blowing up trenches. The plan later, uh, I maybe didn't explain it too carefully. Uh, the plan later is to blow up a gap, I think 15 block high, between, well, uh, slightly under the floor, because I don't really want to blow up the floor. And also there is another thing here. Um, as you can see, there is a lot of small lava pockets that was between the bedrocks earlier. So if I just start blowing things up slightly below here, this lava shouldn't pour down and uh, we don't have to deal with it because I really don't want to deal with it. As you can see, there is obsidian here and a lot of annoyance. So I'm going to start a few blocks below because there shouldn't be anything, any spawnable caves, uh, just a few layers uh, under the, the sea lanterns. And we're going to be blowing up a 15 high space for uh, the world eater, uh, because I think I'm going to be using a 15 high world eater, and then we're just going to world eat the rest uh, below here. But there are a few issues with world eating, so I'm also dealing with that right now. And I kind of wanted to show you in case you will ever do world eating on a 118 world. Keep in mind that things like this can generate. So this is uh, an aquifer, I guess it's called. And this is, well, it's not an aquifer because this is not aqua. It's lava ether, something like that. Uh, lava lakes, basically, next to water lakes. So when the world eater would come down here and blow this stuff up, the water would pour into the lava and we would just get enormous amounts of obsidian. So we need to be clearing this as well. Let's start doing this. I'm gonna need to clear this. This is pretty much on the edge of uh, where the world eater is gonna be running. So it might not even be necessary, but uh, I, I kind of want to do it because I think the world eater will end around this edge here. Let, let's just look here. Not exactly sure, yeah. So this is, the world eater or we gonna be removing pretty much all the way to the wall here and if we free come down yeah the, the 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 lake is just below here so we need to remove it and i'm gonna be probably finding other lakes like that that we also need to deal with but this was the worst one and the biggest one all so, right uh, let's get to it let's uh, clear the water and uh, let's bomb out some more trenches 
this is the second trench maker. I'm just gonna show you how this one works and the others are gonna be exactly the same. And uh, if you know something about uh, world eaters and trenches, you might know that uh, usually they need like two wide trenches on, on two ends and the two sides only need narrow trenches. But I am making wide trenches because I realized that they are pretty much the same amount of work. There's a little bit more building involved, right? I could just build one of these bombers on one of the side trenches. But I decided that like it's, it's pretty much the same, especially clearing the lava, it ends up being the same amount of work. And if there is more space to work, it's just easier. So let's run this one. Actually, uh, 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 before I do anything, I completely forgot once again. Um, I forgot to put uh, the return stations on the other side. So what Y level is this? This is Y level 24. It surprises me always how low it is, but it's of course correct. And at Y level 24, I just need to put up a row of furnaces. And this is where uh, the flying machines are going to bounce. And it's interesting that I just heard the zombies. Why are there zombies in here? The mob switch is on. So this must be some, some zombie that has picked up items, I, I suspect. Because uh, they're not supposed to be in there. The first run that I do with them, I kind of want to do them one at a time. It is better to run them together because then they blow up more blocks more reliably when they move exactly in sync. But for the first run, it is better to move them separately because, uh, uh, well, the TNTs will be pushing each other and there is a good chance that the TNTs will push each other a lot to the side and just blow up the buildings. So this one is going to fly alone. Now I can turn it off. And we're going to give it a few seconds, a little bit more, maybe start blowing things up so that they can just see that everything is working more or less correctly. Yeah, as you can see, even the TNTs land on each other and they keep pushing each other. But with one, it's relatively safe. It's not perfect, as you can see, like they, they, they get pushed to the side a lot, but... Uh, if the TNTs were flying next to each other, it would be even worse. So this, this way, it's a little bit safer. We're gonna do a lot of blowing up of stuff. And I have drawn a circle around 128 blocks from that AFK spot, just so I could have a decent idea how much I should blow up. But it's it's pretty much fine, and I'm not gonna build a circle. For, for a while, I was thinking that I would build an island in the middle of uh, the perimeter with a circle, but uh, I, I don't like that idea for various reasons. But we can talk about that later. I keep forgetting that I need to turn this on now. And a lot of lava. That's why I'm just running them once now, uh, because when they come back, they're going to be turned off. Uh, that's because I need to clear that obsidian and that lava. Uh, but there isn't that much lava until we go slightly deeper down to Y level minus 54. Then we get a new layer of lava again. Oh, but this is looking good. Let's slowly turn them on and run all of them. And I was about to say this is looking good. Well, it's not look, it's working good, but it's not looking good because there's just some graphical problems that I don't understand why they happen. Uh, I, it, I'm suspecting it is something to do with sodium or maybe iris or maybe like I, I, I haven't seen this before. This is new in 118, but I have a new version of Iris and Sodium and Indium and, and a lot of mods that, that change something about rendering. So could be that. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but sometimes the flying machines just leave like rendering ghost blocks in the air and I don't know how to fix that. It doesn't really matter because they, obviously they work. Because otherwise, like a floating minecart with TNTs under it, that would be an interesting flying machine, but no, that's not how it works. So they are working fine. This is just rendering glitches. Right, now we need to clear the lava and some of the obsidian. Actually, not some of the obsidian, all of the obsidian. So like I mentioned in the past, where the sea lanterns are now, we used to have just water. So any lava pockets at the bedrock level, or the old bedrock level, because right, this used to be all, all bedrock here. Um, all those lava pockets were converted into obsidian. Well, at least the upper layer, because the lower layers are there and we need to drain them as well. Let's get to that. 
This is a very interesting bug. So as you can see, two of the flying machines are missing. And uh, the reason for this is, well, I forgot to load these chunks, so they flew into unloaded chunks. That usually isn't the problem, they just, like, the, this kind of, of flying machine, I, I've done this multiple times, they just stop. Then they don't do anything. I have my second account here now, AFK, uh, just to, to chunk load this area, but the flying machines are gone. It's not a visual bug, I, I re-logged. Uh, I think these floating observers are all that's left. Yeah, th yeah this is a an observer that just fell into lava. I've never seen this happen. Like, I, I've had flying machines crash because they ran into unloaded chunks, but I've never had flying machines disappear. Everything except one observer. That's a bizarre. Oh well, I'll just rebuild them, that's not a big issue. But we need to clear lava, that's that's more important now. And for clearing lava, we are using buckets and a, a potion of fire resistance. Um, I'm probably not gonna need the potion right now, uh, or maybe I will, uh, probably not. And what we're doing is just, uh, we're just bucketing up the lava and throwing away the buckets. That's it. And uh, it, it's, it's not a big deal on this, this layer, but it becomes a big, massive deal actually on, on deeper layers. Um, at at mi minus 54, it's gonna be a lot. Just like there used to be a lot of lava at Y level 10. So now everything has just moved down a few blocks. And of course, Nothing else to do than this, removing the obsidian and the lava beneath the obsidian. You know what? I don't know if you're hearing it, but I am hearing it constantly. We need to do this. There we go. Ah, much better. Uh, so I said during the stream that I find the bats annoying because the sound from them is repetitive. Well, unfortunately, even if you replace the bat sounds with my utterances from uh, streams, well, it becomes repetitive as well, especially when I'm saying Aah! something like that. And uh, yeah, that happens during the streams. By the way, since we're here and talking about streams, uh, let me just mention that uh, the stream where we did that trench bumping out is also on my second channel. I have mentioned this in the past, but uh, I thought I'd, I'd mention it again. If you're interested, subscribe. If not, then don't. It's your choice. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Anyway, more trench clearing. The lava there is done. This one I don't care about. This is going to be dealt with by the World Eater later. Uh, but we just need to deal with this. Oh, so much obsidian. All right, and uh, we are bombing the last trench now, uh, but I wanted to show you something funny. So these uh, bombers here, they are supposed to be self-returning. So uh, when they run into push limits, they stop, right? And then they turn around. So on, at the end of uh, the run, I always put in some furnaces so they can bounce on them. Guess what happens uh, when we don't have furnaces? <laughs> it's actually not too bad, right? They just picked up parts of the wall here and, uh, well, just carried them with them. Uh, oh, I shouldn't run out of rockets when I'm flying over lava like this. But yeah, they just picked up pieces of the wall and uh, carried them with them. They're, they're still not rendering properly. No idea why that is happening, but uh, it is happening all the time. And only, like, first few runs. Uh, when I'm clearing the end of the trenches, this doesn't happen. So it has something to do with how many blocks got removed or something like that. Don't really understand it. But yeah, uh, I don't think actually having this, this concrete on the bombers should hurt that much. I don't think. I'm just gonna put up the furnaces and see what happens. But I, I think this concrete doesn't matter at all. I probably don't need the furnaces anymore, but nah, let's let's not risk it. Let's let's do this semi properly, even though I already messed up. Oop, that's oh, that kind of probably worked. Did it work? Yeah, it did work. I have some pumpkins there. But yeah, this is the last trench, and uh, it's going well. It's not that much lava, and I'm not regretting the decision that I've decided to make 
all the trenches equally wide. It's just... It is simpler to clear wide trenches than narrow trenches. That, that, that I figured out. And, and you end up clearing almost as much lava anyway, because it keeps spilling on the sides. I just noticed something interesting. I almost wore out two pairs of wings uh, while doing this. Now I'm wearing my second spare wings uh, to just finish this off the last trench. Wasn't there a change in 118 that your wings were out from using rockets rather than the distance flown? I think there was something like that. That would actually explain it. Uh, not sure if I like that change since I'm flying so much here. On the other hand, it should be relatively easy to repair. Anyway, we have reached uh, where we began, and uh, so this was somewhere here, I think, was the water lake I drained in the beginning. Yeah, it was right there, uh, but now we actually need to deal with the lava lake, I think, uh, or do we? How far in do I go here? Yeah, yes, this definitely needs to go. It needs to go, oh, further than that. It needs to go about to that gravel over there. Oh, boy. That's a lot, but we have a lot of buckets. I'm now on my third shulker box of uh, iron blocks that I'm converting into buckets. So uh, this is taking quite a few buckets, but we have the iron. Let's just use it. All right, and it's all done. All the trenches are cleared. There might be some stray blocks here, but I'm not worrying about this right now. Now we need to decide, oh, like a stray block here. I, I'm, I'm still patrolling here and trying to catch these and, and remove them. But it, it's not a big deal. It's a few and, and I'm going to verify that everything is correct when we're going to be building the world eater. But first, like I mentioned, we need to cut, well, 15 layers out of this and in just a giant hole. And for that, we're going to be using a tunnel bore. And um, I've been debating with myself if I should build my tunnel bore or use Il Mango's tunnel bore. And uh, the advantage of using a more traditional tunnel bore is that my tunnel bore, and I know it's a weakness of it, it doesn't really blow up that high. It only reliably does four blocks. I actually said in the video five, but it's five if, if only you're using one barrel. If you're using the expandable tunnel bore, the barrels are kind of far away from each other and... Uh, they only do reliably four blocks, so I would have to build it... Well, to get a 15 high gap uh, somewhere here, I would need to build it four times, while El Mango Tunnel Board does six, maybe even seven blocks, so I would have to build it, well, three times probably, and then I would get even bigger gap. And uh, I've been debating with myself, but no, I, I, I'm building my own tunnel bore. Even though I would have to build it three times, I definitely know how to debug it, so if anything goes wrong, and uh, trust me, I, I'm expecting everything to go wrong multiple times, I know exactly how to debug mine. I don't really understand all the details of, of how other people's tunnel bores work. So even, I'm suspecting, like, even, even though it's slower because I have to do it four times, it's going to be faster because I'm going to spend less time fixing problems. I could be wrong, but uh, I probably not. Let's build that. Yeah, the minecart there. And uh, the last minecart. Yes, it is built. Oh yeah, the tunnel bore is built. But if you are a little bit observant and have seen this thing before, well, there is still one component missing. And I have bad news. So every bit here where we have the shroom lights right the observer shroom light and there need to be free ancient debris in front of it and uh, well the bad news is i need almost two stacks of ancient debris and this is all i've got so i need uh, almost a whole new stack of ancient debris maybe slightly less but I will not have time to finish it before I want this episode to come out. So the solution is simple. Tonight, after this episode has come out, we're going to do a stream and we're going to be blowing up a lot of the nether just to get some ancient debris. Not with a tunnel bore, probably just with TNT because I have found that to be the most efficient method. And um, after we've collected enough ancient debris, it shouldn't take that long. It's, it's relatively fast. I probably should get a stack in, in under an hour. Uh, famous last words. 
but uh, after that we're gonna finish this and we're gonna test fire it and actually probably just dig as much as we can but uh, this will of course take quite a long time and i will try to stream some of it uh, but uh, this project will definitely not be finished in a week uh, i suppose i don't know uh, so hopefully we have uh, cut down maybe half of the hole that we need before the next episode. But uh, today's episode was just only about the trenches and building the tunnel bore. And well, we will start blowing things up under here. Next time we're going to do something more usual, like building something. And I'm going to be running the tunnel bores in the background and just giving you progress updates. But today I wanted to make it this big, big, big push. Uh, so that I would get at least, well, I don't know, I, I, I want to say halfway done, but I don't know if this is halfway or we have just barely started. We'll notice in the future when this is finished, if this finishes in three weeks or if it finishes in three months, we'll see. But uh, that's enough for me today. Like I said, there will be a stream a few hours after this episode has come out. So come to Discord and get updates uh, when that will happen. Uh, it will be on twitch.tv slash borkon underscore live. I hope to see you there. And if not, I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, well, have a good trenching, tunnel boring. Well, one of these. Bye. And, and I shouldn't be throwing out all my expensive stuff when I'm standing this close to the edge and there's probably lava below there. Bye.